Let's talk about rhinometry. Well, why would we use a rhinometer? Just make appliances, okay? Well, we talked about the landmarks. We've got the nostril, and we're looking at the posterior and anterior inferior terminate. That's the big player. In your nose, let me go back. In your nose in terms of nasal, in terms of nasal resistance, most of it has to do with this inferior terminate, a little bit with the middle, and none of, none of the superior. So what we're really looking at is the, the nasal patency where it counts the most. So why would we use rhinometry? I mean, why? Why, why do you need to use rhinometry? Nasal patency, number one, you've got to establish nasal patency. Number two, it's very non-invasive. That's why I've got my, one of my main pulmonologists look, he's probably going to go to rhinometry. Okay? Number two, ENT communication, it's a recognition. If someone said to you, hey baby, uh, 20 implants. I mean, would you pay attention if I was speaking your language? Or 28 implants? What? Bam! He's like, what? 28 what? You want me to do what? You know? So it's, it's really, it's recognized by our medical colleagues. Allergist referral, okay? You know, if you come in and your nose has a bunch of different measurements over time, and you, you know, that's an allergy. That's not a giant polyp, okay? And then oral appliance therapy prognosis. Again, directly affected by what? Nasal patency. Huh, very important. I mean, would you evaluate someone periodontally without x-rays and a periodontal probe? No, this is our x-ray and our periodontal probe. So let's talk about, let me show you a case where without rhinometry, we might have screwed this up. So here's a lateral set. Here's the airway, wide open. Anybody used to look in lateral sets? That was a wide open airway. That was beautiful. Okay, but what I want to do now is let's cut through Barry and let's take Barry C, not Barry G. Um, I'd love to cut through that. <laughs> so let's. I'm teasing, sort of. Anyway, let's take a look. At, let's take a look at the paranasal sinuses. So here we are in the front, of the, just right through the tip of the nose. Okay, here we are moving back, back, back. Now a normal sinus should look like this, shouldn't it? Big black hole, right? Normal perinasal sinus, use your superior, middle, and inferior terminate. And, oh, wait a minute. This is normal. What is that? Okay. That is a, where's the medial wall of the maxillary sinus? Gone. Okay. This is one fungating animal in there. Okay. Here is the, again, here's a picture of the perinasal sinus. This is what the, what the rhinometer is measuring. Here is the left side, normal, kind of like yours. Here's the left side. Here's the right side. Okay, there, there's something going on. See that? So do you think this alerted me to take a closer look at this guy's nose? Absolutely. Do you think I would have, if I didn't have instrumentation, would I have made him an appliance anyway? Would I would have maximized the benefit of the appliance without opening up the nose? 